westward. Pioneers plodding from the Atlantic seaboard over the mountains to the plains beyond the Ohio River. Every new vista revealed the riches of a new land. Fertile soil, timber, stone, rock salt, abundant water, coal, the means of a rich farming country, an industrial empire teeming with people. But the road to this land of promise was hard and uncertain. Then came the Iron Horse, the Tom Thumb, first locomotive built in America, riding the rails of America's first railroad in 1829. In the beginning, the Pioneer Line ran only 13 miles out of Baltimore, but its bold objective was revealed by its very name, the Baltimore and Ohio, from the seaboard to a great inland river. Improved engines followed each other in quick succession. The Lafayette was the first locomotive on the B&O with a horizontal boiler. There was a brisk business in freight, particularly in flour, from the mills at Ellicott at the end of the line. With 13 miles of shining rails, with cars and snorting engines, the Baltimore and Ohio made a brave beginning, the beginning of rail transportation in America. At the Mount Clare station in Baltimore, word went round among the patrons of stagecoaches and horse cars, something new, something better. The vegan O is the way to go. Beyond the railhead, a vast terrain awaited the Iron Horse. Destined for development was the heart of Eastern America, reaching from the Atlantic to the Mississippi, from the Great Lakes to the Southland. Chartered in Baltimore in 1827, the railroad built westward, reaching Harpers Ferry in 1836. By 1852, the highway of steel reached to Wheeling. A path of civilization had been cut to the plains beyond the Ohio River. An inland empire was ready for conquest. Today, the Baltimore and Ohio is a system with 11,000 miles of track, serving our most densely populated area, linking 13 great states to the nation. Today, the region is the site of vast industries, the site of thousands upon thousands of factories. It's a region of great mines, tapping varied and almost limitless mineral treasures. From the Atlantic to the Mississippi, its good earth yields food for the millions. There are hundreds of progressive communities, including most of the nation's greatest cities. It is a region of huge production, of dense population, of enormous markets a region which presents a tremendous challenge to transportation. This is the challenge which the Baltimore and Ohio faces. This is the challenge which it is meeting with modern, efficient facilities and service. More than two-thirds of the nation's coal supply comes from the area served by this railroad, from mines in West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. From deep mines come trains of electrically operated cars bearing a wide variety of fine bituminous coals to be cleaned and prepared for market. Some coal comes from strip mines. Shovels remove the overburden of earth, exposing the seams. The coal is carried in trucks to the nearest tipple for loading into railroad cars. Millions are being spent by the bituminous coal industry on modern mining equipment and methods. Millions are being spent to give users a better prepared, cleaner coal. The gigantic tonnages turned out by the mines present a great challenge to transportation. from the mine tipples moves the coal in tens of thousands of hopper cars. The millions of tons mined each year move to the heart of industrial America. It's a tremendous job of heavy hauling, but the powerful modern locomotives are equal to the task. Bituminous coals for every purpose. Power for the nation's greatest industries. Power and heat for homes, stores, and institutions. For hamlets and great cities. Coal is king. Bituminous coal hauled by the
rather be in all powers its own fleet of steam locomotives and also those of many other railroads. Great volumes are transferred from cars to ships at many strategic points, like the Curtis Bay Coal Pier in Baltimore. Giant machines easily pick up the 70-ton cars and dump them into chutes, which feed conveyor belts. Up to the top of the pier goes the coal in endless streams, down into ships and barges bound for near and far away piers, bound for American ports and ports across the sea. The Baltimore and Ohio has coal loading facilities at five ports on Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. The largest are at Lorraine and Toledo, Ohio. These are Lake Erie's most modern and efficient coal piers with large supporting yard facilities. Here at Lorraine, 70-ton cars are dumped at the rate of one a minute. Bound for other ports of the Great Lakes with coal to power factories and heat homes in the United States and Canada. With such facilities, the railroad speeds coal of every type from mine to consumer, meeting the challenge of coal. Closely coordinated with the coal loading facilities at Lorraine and Toledo are modern iron ore docks. From the mines along the upper lakes, fleets of ore carriers bring in this basic material of the steel industry. Here again, modern facilities speed the job of interchange between lake vessels and railroads. Off for the great steel making centers, each car loaded with from 50 to 70 tons of the heavy ore. Limestone, another essential for steel making, comes from vast deposits throughout the B&O territory. Day and night, the year round, cars of ore, limestone, coal, scrap, coke, move in to feed the furnaces and steel mills. To the top of the furnaces goes the mixture of ore, limestone, and coal to be dumped into the raging inferno within. Steel making, vital in peace and war, depends upon the railroads. For more than a century, the Baltimore and Ohio has been carrying raw materials to the iron furnaces. For more than a century, it has been carrying to consumers the products of these furnaces. Products of every sort, from pipes to milk pails, from window screens to locomotives. Products for all America. Products for the world. Along the rails move the raw materials and products of hundreds of industries. Petroleum from the oil fields to the refineries. Tractors and other automotive products. The B&O brings lumber to your front door. It brings pulpwood to the mills and takes away paper. It carries stone, sand for the glass industry, clay for pottery, salt, plaster. It fights in liquid latex at its marine terminal at Locust Point, Baltimore, and unloads blocks of crude rubber from plantations in faraway lands. It moves these materials to processing plants in Akron and elsewhere to be made into products ranging from erasers to automobile tires. Each year, millions of tons of goods are carried to markets, many of them close at hand, for the territory served by the B&O is America's greatest, most compact market, with two-thirds of its industries. To aid industry in selecting the best sites for new plants in this favored region, the railroad maintains an industrial development department. A confidential report is prepared for a manufacturer in search of a new plant location. A report of studies made by a staff of experts based on the manufacturer's individual needs in raw materials, 
power, transportation, labor, and market. Through such custom-made plans, many sites have been selected for industry. Time has proven the soundness of this industrial development service. Agriculture, too, demands dependable transportation. From thousands of farms comes food for the millions, as well as products for industry. One of the richest farming areas is the mucklands of Indiana and Western Ohio, an important part of being an old territory known as the bumper belt. From this fertile section come record crops of vegetables and fruit and grain. Bigger crops mean more business for the B&O, so the railroad helps the farmer. Soil doctors make chemical tests to determine if the soil needs liming or other treatment. Prizes and scholarships are offered to farmers and their sons producing the best crops. Methods of conserving topsoil through drainage, contour farming, and reforestation are encouraged. With dairy herds declining in recent years, the Baltimore and Ohio has helped to step up milk production through better breeding. It has been instrumental in supplying purebred sires. Here getting their exercise are the blue bloods of cattledom, four popular breeds, Guernsey, Holstein, Jerseys, and Ayrshire. A beautiful baby, only 16 hours old, but already getting about like a champion. Through better sires, better stock is appearing on many farms. Full-grown cows and top producers of milk, every one. The railroad serves the milk industry in many ways, including the hauling of evaporated milk, cheese, and other dairy products. It handles the shipment of thousands of cars of livestock raised on farms throughout the territory. Many shipments are interchanged with other railroads. Livestock on its way to the great meat packing centers of the nation, to markets everywhere. Food of every sort, including many perishable delicacies, the essentials and luxuries of our daily diet, safely and quickly delivered in refrigerator cars. To handle the vast volume of freight of all kinds requires modern large-scale terminal facilities. At bar yards in Chicago, at Cone Yards in East St. Louis, and at many other terminals, there is fast, efficient classification of freight, dispatching of trains, and interchange of cars with other railroads. In some yards, cars are classified by a system known as humping. As each car is pushed over the top of a grade, it is uncoupled. It rolls down by gravity to the proper track being slowed as required by devices known as retarders. It's a quick, efficient way of sorting cars, of handling them with care. The switches are set and the retarders are controlled by operating levers in the control tower. Another train is ready to go as a railroad policeman tests the door seals. In Washington and other cities are modern public facilities for loading and unloading freight. To handle the millions of tons of grain produced in the West, the railroad maintains elevators and other facilities. From the storage bins of the great modern elevator at Locust Point, Baltimore, grain moves through galleries on endless belts to the loading piers. of bushels roll into the terminal and go out in the holds of ships to the ports of the world. The Baltimore and Ohio's Locust Point Marine Terminal is one of the world's great import and export facilities with 53 miles of track and 10 large piers at which as many as 24 ocean-going vessels are loaded at the same time. Both in war and peace, it plays an important role in conducting the nation's business. At Rochester, company ferries transport cars across the broad expanse of Lake Ontario to Canada.
Among the modern innovations to speed the operation of its tugboats is radio telephone communication between pilot houses and headquarters ashore. In hundreds of cities, there are convenient tracks for loading and unloading freight. Free pickup and delivery service on less than carload freight affords prompt and economical transportation from shipper's door to receiver's door. To keep the trains moving, the railroad maintains a great fleet of freight and passenger locomotives and all the engine terminal facilities required to turn them around quickly and to keep them in first-class running condition. There are no less than 2,000 powerful steam and diesel locomotives and 50 well-equipped engine terminals. Swift, safe movement of freight and passenger trains is ensured by modern communication and signal systems. Block signals and switches are controlled from towers by a system known as route interlocking. When the tower man gets an order to put through an approaching train, he selects a route on the panel, which is a diagram of signal blocks. By pressing entrance and exit controls, every switch and signal is set automatically. It takes a fortune in modern equipment and the services of thousands of experienced railroad men to keep the trains moving safely, efficiently, and on time. Maintenance is a big job, a job that requires constant vigilance, constant service, 365 days of the year. The railroad is proud of the cleanliness of its cars and spends keeping them that way. Simple repairs and replacements are made on open tracks. Thousands of cars must be serviced regularly to ensure efficient operation. B&O's biggest shops are at Baltimore, Cumberland, and Pittsburgh. The Mount Clare shops in Baltimore are the oldest railroad shops in America and among the largest and most modern in existence. Safety conscious workmen rebuild and repair thousands of cars and engines each year. Out of the shop comes a completely reconditioned locomotive as a stripped down veteran of service waits to receive the same rejuvenation. These completely equipped shops Man with craftsmen of all needed types are turning out not only reconditioned, but new cars and engines, even complete trains as modern as tomorrow. It takes more than trains and tracks and structures to make a railroad. It takes people. The B&O is built on the experience, the skills, and the trustworthiness of many thousands of men and women on duty on trains and tracks in shops, offices, and yards. The General Office Building in Baltimore is the nerve center of the railroad. Here is the head of the great communication system. Here are the up-to-the-minute records of activities over 11,000 miles of track. Day and night, reports from everywhere pour in on batteries of teleprinters. Some reports are punched out on tape or sending out by teletypes to distant points. Modern machines are used to compile thousands of system-wide reports. Here, too, are the headquarters of Sentinel Service, a system established by the Baltimore and Ohio to bring a new standard of efficiency to the movement of carload freight. This new service means siding-to-siding -siding dependability for shipper and consignee. The Blue Book of Sentinel Service is a directory for shippers, both online and offline. It contains complete information on facilities. When a shipper delivers a loaded car on his own siding at a certain hour, the published schedules show the hour of delivery. The cars are watched constantly by trained workers who see that the job is completed from siding to siding in strict accordance with established schedules. The teletypes report the movement of cars through each terminal, 
They also report interruptions to service, getting quick notice to shippers and consignees of the location of their cars. Through Sentinel service, there is absolute control of each car from siding to siding, including public, private, and interchange facilities. This is one of the greatest advances in handling freight in many years. Located in the most densely populated area of the United States, with more than 52 million persons, the Baltimore and Ohio faces a tremendous challenge in its passenger business. This challenge is being met by some of the finest service on American rail. It is being met by new and modernized depots. City ticket offices, such as Washington's, with drive-in ticket pickup service. It is being met by a selected group of travel experts and by special aid to women patrons. From the nation's capital, and from many scores of progressive cities and towns, thousands of passengers set out daily on journeys of business and pleasure. The Royal Blue, deluxe streamliner between Washington and New York, is one of many famous B&O trains. Important cities are close together along this route. Baltimore shown here, Wilmington, Philadelphia, third city of the nation. Beautiful Mount Royal Station is one of the landmarks of Baltimore. Bound for New York, the world's largest city. From Trainside in Jersey City, comfortable motor coaches carry passengers by ferry across the Hudson, affording views of the metropolis that will never be forgotten. This unique train connection service carries passengers and their baggage to and from 13 hotels and stations in New York and Brooklyn. When you've made the coach, you've made your train. First railroad to enter Washington, the Baltimore and Ohio is today the only railroad whose main line passes through the nation's capital. Late every afternoon, there is a big parade as four feature trains pull out in quick succession for overnight trips to the Midwest. From Washington, the main line runs through the historic Potomac Valley, the most direct route to the Midwest. At Harper's Ferry and all along the line are scenes of rare beauty. At Cumberland, the line divides into two main routes. One runs through West Virginia and Southern Ohio to the Union Station in Cincinnati, important gateway to the south. The line continues to St. Louis, industrial and railroad center of the Mississippi Valley. The second great trunk line from Cumberland cuts northwest through the mountains to Pittsburgh. From Pittsburgh, the route runs through Akron, the rubber center, and other cities of Ohio and Indiana. Its terminal is among the great towers of Chicago, railroad center of the world. At this great crossroads, where millions live, shop, and travel, many arrive or leave at the B&O's Grand Central Terminal. Night and morning, deluxe streamliners leave B&O terminals on trunk lines running east, west, north, south. 11,000 miles of busy track, linking Washington, Baltimore, Wilmington, Philadelphia, New York, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Rochester, Akron, Dayton, Toledo, Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago, St. Louis, Indianapolis, Louisville, Cincinnati. A roll call of great American cities. A trip in a Baltimore and Ohio feature train is an event to be remembered. Deluxe equipment, courteous service, good food, and on-time dependability make B&O the way to go. The coaches are well-designed and equipped. Air-conditioned? Of course. Baltimore and Ohio introduced the air conditioning of trains. Passengers may reserve reclining seats in advance. Seats and footrests are easily adjustable. Solid comfort. The B&O was the first Eastern Railroad to employ stewardess nurses trained to make the journey pleasant in many ways. The Royal Blue on the New York to Washington run introduced the unique service, train radio telephone calls. The stewardess from the board in the observation car places the call. And the passenger takes it in a booth exactly as if he were talking over a regular telephone line. Good food makes any journey more pleasant. 
Baltimore and Ohio feature trains have a variety of dining facilities, including snack cars. The buffet cars, with their friendly club-like atmosphere, are popular with everybody. At the commissaries, the food which has helped to make the railroad famous is loaded into the diners. Garden fresh vegetables, juicy steaks, roasts and other cuts. Everything it takes to make a memorable meal. Good food cooked to perfection is served in Baltimore and Ohio diners every day. Dishes like these will make you hungry. Oh yes, and there's a surprise at the breakfast table. Pleasant journey. All of the Baltimore and Ohio's feature trains between East and Midwest cross the heart of the Allegheny. From the broad windows of the observation car may be seen rivers and canyons and forested mountains, some of the finest scenery in Eastern America. Here is a good place for a friendly chat, for refreshment. There's opportunity to let the folks back home know about the trip. The stewardess is eager to be of service and specially trained to assist mothers of small children. A picturesque and historic route, especially along the Potomac. Passengers are kept informed of passing points of interest through a public address system with a loudspeaker in every car. This is your stewardess. I thought you might like to know that we're about to pass Harper's Ferry. Harper's Ferry, scene of John Brown's raid and of other stirring events of Civil War days. The Baltimore and Ohio was in the thick of it, often attacked as it carried troops and supplies. Generations later, it carried fighting men and freight to help America win two world wars. Today, as always, the railroad moves forward with improved service, schedules, and equipment, and with its traditional courtesy. Attention, please. Our train will arrive at the next stop in 10 minutes. Those seat training, please do so promptly. The attendants will assist you with your luggage. Yes, the train is on time. Being on time is a Baltimore and Ohio custom. One of several traditional customs which lend that extra something to a journey that makes B and O the way to go. Fast, dependable, progressive. That's the B and O. The railroad of Sentinel Service. The railroad that has met and will continue to meet the challenge of the great region which it serves.